As we go into the new year, a new big board. Today's NBA Now by Chat Sports takes a look at the recent NBA big board put out by ESPN as we look ahead to the 2024 NBA draft, which will be here before you know it. I know we just crossed into the new season and new year, but hey, five, six months away from the draft, it's a good time to get to know some of these prospects. And if you want more 2024 NBA draft coverage on Chat Sports here, type me, get it your voice and let yourself be heard here on the channel. Spam me so we know to bring more NBA draft content. All right, let's dive into it because we have a new number one. Previously, it was Isaiah Collier of USC. Well, now it's Alex Sar, the big man who plays for Perth, is from France. You might have a Frenchman go number one in the draft for a back-to-back -back year. 7-1, 18-year-old prospect. He can do it all. Sar ranked number one. How about another guy from that same country? Zachary Risacher, a forward who has really emerged as an elite defensive player who can also find his shot. 6'10", if you're sensing a theme, well, it's some lengthy wings going atop this draft class. But here's the first collegiate player on their big board, and it's Cody Williams, the Colorado Buffalo. No, it's not just Deion Sanders making things happen at Colorado. Williams jumped up from the previous big board of 10 to 3. He's been playing Excellent for the Buffaloes in this collegiate season. The 6'8 wing really is reminding people of his older brother, Jalen Williams from the Thunder, if you ever heard of him. He is really an intriguing prospect. Another one who's intriguing probably is going to be the Big 12 freshman of the year, Jacoby Walter. He really can do it all for the Baylor Bears. He's a 6'5 guard slash forward hybrid. He's excellent off the catch and shooting. He's 19, so a little bit of an older freshman, but I will say this, his three-point ball and defensive ability gives me a lot of DeAndre Hunter vibe. 6'5", six, 6'9", six, wingspan. He can really defend in getting in the passing lanes. I'm a big fan of Walter's game, and that three-point ability will translate to the NFL or to the NBA NFL right away. But let me know. We went through the top four in this NBA draft class. Who is your number one player in this class? We have a guy coming up in just a bit named Ron Holland that I've been a big fan of, but he dropped quite a bit. So make sure you tune in to find out where he fell. But let me know your number one player in this draft class down below. Rounding out the top five, we have another Nikola. Yep, another Nikola. Nikola Topic, the point guard from Serbia. He's 6'7", really lengthy. The, honestly, size comparison is a little bit Luka Doncic. 6'7", he's a really young guy. Jumped from 9 to 5 in the previous um, big board. And he's going to have a chance to actually make a bigger name for himself as he is switching teams down in the European League. So he'll have a chance to really show out on a bigger scale. Number 6. Tajani Saloon, another guy coming from France, 6'10 forward. I don't know what they're feeding those kids over there, but, man, they're consistent in being 6'10 and lengthy on the wings. He is going to have a chance to be a lottery pick. Jumped from 15 to 6 on the previous big board from ESPN. We go back to the collegiate scene. Robert Dillingham, the freshman guard out of Kentucky, he has really been someone alongside Reed Shepard, who we'll get to in just a bit, to transform this John Calipari-led Kentucky basketball team into a dynamic school in that collegiate level right now. Look on him when it comes to March. Dillingham is someone who's very enticing. We mentioned Isaiah Collier a little bit earlier. He jumped, or fell, I should say, from 1 to 8 in this New big board update, the point guard from USC. The Trojans have really struggled, by the way, and Collier has been a reason why. He has been only averaging 11.8 points per game in the month of December, and USC's record, 6-7, and seven. and they got Bronny James back as well, and they're still continuing to struggle in the Pac-12. I don't know if we're going to get to see Collier in March Madness. Well, because the Trojans are stinking up the joint. Number nine, Kyle Filipowski, and I'm a big fan of Filipowski's game. I thought he was going to come out of the 
collegiate level and going to the draft last season, elected to go return back for John Shire and Duke, and he has just had an excellent season this year. He's averaging 2.6 blocks a game, 7-footer. He's very versatile when it comes to the offensive end, can play make as well as clean up some boards around the rim. I really like Filipowski's game. Stretch big as well, where when he gets to the league, I kind of project him as a little bit of a Lori marketing type player. Rounding out our top 10 is Matas Bazoulis, who is playing in the G League Ignite. He's a forward, 6'10", 19, originally from Chicago, by the way. The name might suggest otherwise. But he has been showcasing himself really, really well down the G League. Had a good time in the two games at the G League Winner Showcase. He is very... He reminds me a lot of, let's just say, Franz Wagner, a wing that can really do it all. Shoot, finish, play, make. I like Bazoulis' game, and I definitely expect him to go top 10 when we're talking NBA draft in June. Which is why you should subscribe, because we will be the home for the 2024 NBA draft. We'll be live for the draft. We'll also lead up with multiple mock drafts and player breakdowns, kind of like this video here. So if you want to stay up to date during the trade deadline and leading up to the NBA draft, this is the channel for you. Lock us in for the next six to seven months, and you won't regret it, I promise you that. Going to number 11, Ron Holland, who I mentioned a little bit in earlier. 6'7 wing, 18 years old, also playing on the G League Ignite with Bazoulis. And I really like his game. He struggled a little bit in with turnovers, the three-point shooting. But when you just look at his raw physical traits alongside his ability to get to the rim, I'm a big fan of Ron Holland. He comes in 11 after previously being ranked 5th by ESPN. I'd still think... He goes top five when things are all said and done. I am a big fan of Ron Holland, and I expect him to climb from now until June. Back to college, Ryan Dunn, another wing from Virginia. And the wings from Virginia usually work out for you in the league. He's 6'8", obviously coming out of the Cavaliers, Tony Bennett system. He's going to be very well taught in the defensive level. He can really move his feet. A good off-ball, rotates well in defense. The problem is, is how is he going to be offensively? Because, well, you don't really get a lot of offensive game while watching Virginia basketball. But if Dunn can up his three-point shooting, he is absolutely going to be a lottery pick. Donovan Klingon, the 7-2 big man from UConn. And this one is really, I think, because of his injury history. When you're 7-2 and... You're going to have a lot of banged up. You're, you're going to get injured a lot, right? That's We haven't seen centers with those type of guys stay healthy for long. Just look at Joel Embiid, for example, always dealing with foot injuries. Klingon currently right now suffering from a sprained ankle, and it's not the first time he's had foot injuries. He was previously ranked sixth because if he stays healthy, that's the type of player he's going to be in that top ten um, con or decision and talking about, but when you think of Klingon's injury history, it's going to bump him down in the draft process. How about another seven-footer? Zach Eady, the center from Purdue, who's spending his fourth year for the Boilermakers. He's 21. He's going to be 22 by the draft process. Another big guy, 7-4, and he jumped up from 32 to obviously 14 on ESPN's big board, and I don't get this one at all. We know this might be a little bit of a down year for the NBA draft where you don't have those elite players coming out when it's not a deep class. But are we that down bad where Zach Eady's 14? I'm a college basketball junkie. I love watching hoops in the collegiate level. And Zach Eady is probably the best player because of how much he could just dominate the defensive end and also dominate the paint on offense. But Zach Eady, I don't see him translating to the NBA. He's 7'4", but he can't really move his feet. You get a pick and roll, he's going to have to play drop coverage the entire time. He's not going to be able to switch onto a guard and stay in front of him. He'll get blown by right away. And then his offensive game, very limited. He could only do things in the post. He doesn't really have that good of a jumper. So my question is to ESPN, if he's your 14th ranked prospect, what do you project with him, right? Like, how is he going to make a team better? Sure, he could be a backup center in the NBA. But we've seen these type of guys that dominate at the college level just because of their size, not really be able to do anything in the NBA. Look at Taco Fall, for example. I know that's a big extreme, but he's 7'6". He wasn't able to do anything because he couldn't defend, and he was very limited on offense. 
We'll get to the remaining remaining players on this ESPN big board. But first, I got to show some love to Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. And if you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS, you'll get a first deposit match up to $100 when you use code CLNS. I'm looking to the NFL Week 18 slate because, oh boy, are there some good games that mean a lot. And on Saturday, we have a big time matchup between the Texans and the Colts. Winner might go to the playoffs, loser. Well, you could kiss your playoff chances potentially goodbye. I think it's going to be a shootout in that game. So I'm taking more than on C.J. Stroud's 257.5 passing yards. And I'll also take the more than on Gardner Minshew's 240.5 passing yards. You can join me at Prize Picks. You can also take picks from players or like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz. Join me and join them at Prize Picks. And make sure you get that $100 first deposit match when you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS, you're practically losing money not taking advantage of that deal. Link is in the description and comments of today's video. Top 15 closes with another wing, and this is an older prospect, Kevin McCuller Jr. out of Kansas, the highest-ranked Jayhawk on this list. He's almost 23 already, but he has been able to showcase his ability to shoot the three ball, and he's had an unbelievable leap in that department, shooting 40% from beyond the arc right now for the Jayhawks, which really has been the biggest surprise out of anyone because he hasn't really been able to shoot that three-point shot in the past, but he's good defensively, had he basketball player. He will absolutely be in the discussion for a first-round pick. I don't know about 15, to be honest. I think he could go in the 20 to 25 range to a contender looking to draft a rookie that impacts them right away, a.k.a. a little Christian Brown action from a couple years ago for Denver and Jaime Jaquez Jr. this year for the Miami Heat. Number 16, Reed Shepard. And this is a little low, in my opinion. I am a big fan of Shepard. He's a freshman guard for Kentucky. He actually comes off the bench. He's a little bit older as an NBA draft freshman, I should say, at 19 and a half age, but 6'2". He is shooting at like 50% from three this year, 60% from the field, and he also gets into the passing lanes, averaging just about two steals a night for the Wildcats. I really like Reed Shepard's game. He is someone who can really facilitate, and I think he would be a player that comes into the NBA and has an immediate role as a backup point guard. I kind of think he's a little TJ McConnell-esque at the beginning, but he could translate into a really Chris Paul-type floor spacing and facilitator for an NBA team. Stephon Castle, the freshman from UConn, who was ranked actually eighth in the previous big board released by ESPN. He hasn't really got going for the Huskies. He's now inserted in that starting lineup. He missed a little bit of the beginning of the season with an injury, but the 6'6 guard slash wing is really someone who can be solid. And when you look at him, you think about his defense ability. He's really good at staying in front of opposing players. Um, disrupting passes, disrupting shots. It's all about the offense. He's one for eight at, from three this year at the collegiate level, so he's not really shooting them. And when he is shooting them, he can't really make them. It's all about his jump shot. If he's able to figure it out, he can potentially be a intriguing prospect when it comes to the NBA draft. It reminds me a lot of Anthony Black, who went top 10 last year out of Arkansas. Not the defender that Black was, but their offensive games were very similar. Head back to the G League, and Tyler Smith, not our own Tyler Smith here at Chat Sports, who you might know from Boston Celtics today, but small forward, power forward, 19 years old, 6'10", also very raw prospect, has really good length and could really look as someone who can be a good defender, and he just got to work on his offensive trajectory. He has a smooth-looking jump shot, but the question is, is it going to be consistent enough at the NBA level? 19, the forward slash center out of Arkansas, Trayvon Brazil. He has been really good for Eric Musselman. He still has a long way to go, but his raw athletic ability allows him to block shots he should not be able to do. And he's, to me, a little bit of a developmental guy because when you're athletic, you can come in a league and you try to rely on your athleticism, and then you realize, well, everyone's as athletic as me. So we'll have a keep an eye on Brazil, kind of a little Derek Lively action with a jump shot if you just look back from a draft class a year ago. Yves Misi, the center from Baylor. What a name right there. I'm a big fan of Misi because he is someone who can protect the rim. And now we're kind of looking in a range of players here, just like Brazil, 
that's got a lot of raw athletic ability, good length on them, and has been able to dominate on defense because of that athleticism. Misi is also someone who's really good at crashing the glass, reads the ball well off the, um, the rim, able to get his team a lot of second chance opportunities. The question with Misi and Brazil is how much can they develop their offensive game to actually contribute at a high level? So we'll have to keep an eye on those two when it comes to the draft in June. As we get to the final five, I do want to get back to you guys. Who is your favorite NBA team? Let me know. No shame if it's the Celtics. Okay, you might be a bandwagon. Or is it maybe the Grizzlies who are now cooking with some gas since John Morant returned? Let me know your favorite NBA team down in the comment section. To get into the last five here, Bobby Clintman. This is one of my favorite players in the draft, if I'm going to be honest. 6'10", wing, and he's coming from Cairns down in Sweden. But the thing with Bobby Clintman was that he actually was at Wake Forest last season and thought about coming into the draft, but elected to go play across the pond and try to hone his skills against professionals one more time before coming back to the draft class. I like Quintman's game. He's been able to score very, really well in his overseas experience, but a little inconsistent as well. Can drop 22, but also only have eight points the next game and then go back up to 24. If Clintman's able to get more consistent, I think he's someone teams are going to be interested in because he's a scoring 6'10 forward that intrigues a lot of people. Kalel Ware, who seven footer center out of Indiana, and I was able to watch him take on Hunter Dickinson and Kansas this early season college basketball. And he stood out to me because his length and his athleticism gave Dickinson a lot of trouble, who is arguably the best offensive big man in college basketball. The question with him is, is his frame. He's seven foot with a really good wingspan, but he doesn't have a lot of meat on his bones. If he's able to get some added weight to him, he'll be able to be a decent defender off the bench for NBA teams in his rookie season. Izan Almanza, the forward slash center, from the G League Ignite who played for Spain. He is a 6'10 forward slash center. Um, he's a little inconsistent, 18 years old. A lot, of, a lot of G League Ignite guys on this list who are playing together trying to find their ways as they elect to go that route over the collegiate route. Uh, those G League Ignite guys, it's tough to project how they are going to be in their first season in the NBA. Dalton Connect, 24, and this is an unbelievably fun story here. He's the leading scorer for the Tennessee Volunteers, averaging 18, 19 a game after transferring in from Northern Arizona. Older prospect, 22, going to be 23 time come draft time, but his offensive game is super, super polished. And like a guy I mentioned earlier in this draft when it came to um, Reed Shepard, I think, and Kevin McCuller Jr., I think they're going to be able to affect NBA teams very early on in their NBA career. And to finish out, this draft big board. Oso Igadaro, the forward slash center out of Marquette, he is a highlight film waiting to happen. He can absolutely elevate, dunk on top of you, block your shot when you didn't even think it was possible. Big fan of Igadaro's game, but the only problem with Oso is that his offensive ability outside of dunking the basketball is limited. So I'm curious to see how NBA teams would use him, but he will absolutely be in the conversation for a first round pick when we're talking about this in June. Before we do head out of here, I want to say something. No Bronny James, who made his NBA, or excuse me, college basketball debut just about two weeks ago. He's been able to flash some impressive things for the Trojans, but like I mentioned with Kyrie earlier, not able to really get any victories for USC. It will be intriguing to see if Bronny James does come out of the this NBA draft, where he will go. Is he deserving of going top 10, top 15? Probably not, at least right now. But my big question is, if LeBron is guaranteeing he's coming to your franchise wherever Bronny James goes because he wants to play with his son to end his career, well, then how much does that improve Bronny James' draft stock? It's something that we'll have to keep our eye on. And I don't think he deserves to be in a top 25 big board, but he really did just have a nice game the other day to open up Pac-12 play, had 15 points, showcased a nice jumper. Maybe Bronny James can sneak into the first round in validity, actually, and not just because of his stats. That'll do it for today's video. Appreciate you guys. If you want more NBA content when it comes to the draft or when it comes to just rumors or news or anything like that, follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll see you on the next video. See you guys later.